we are very pleased to welcome Dr. Dan Guerra. Dr. Guerra is a clinical psychologist and executive coach with more than 25 years of experience. He is also co-author of the book, From Stressed to Centered, A Practical Guide to a Happier and Healthier You. We are so fortunate to have Dr. Guerra help us kick off this important conversation. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. In that class, there was a little bit of time each day to leave school, having been validated, been heard, to have spent time in an environment where that isolated inner world could somehow be touched. Not directly, maybe, but significantly. To have that world be safely addressed, to have feelings and sense of self even integrated that focuses on staying connected in an uncertain world and addressing social emotional learning and character education. Here's what I've seen in my discussions in practice as part of the disconnection and talking to folks much like you. Certainly a moderate amount of stress can be very good for achievement, but most of us are finding ourselves in the higher ranges of stress going unmanaged, which can lead to distress. So there's the stress that comes from the outside. Things like deadlines, and weather, and traffic, and a spouse or partner who might have some complaints about us. <laughs> a pile, everyone's nodding and relating. Don't look at your partners if they're here by chance. Okay, good. And what I'd like to focus on here, very relevant to what we're discussing, is the middle disrupted neurodevelopment, and social, emotional, and cognitive impairment. What we're seeing here as from birth to death, with the generation of trauma being passed down and maybe not addressed, we get that passed, passed on, impacting social conditions, then adverse childhood experiences and a disruption in neurodevelopment. See, it all really starts, I'm learning and I believe, with our physiology. We can get to emotions and the psyche and behaviors, but if you're coming in with a traumatized nervous system, what can we do to have an impact? So breath, you'll be experiencing that today. Mindfulness, which in my 20 years of study is really the harnessing of a non-judgmental awareness. It's not stopping thoughts. It's not being calm. It's really just that. Helping others regulate through language or tone and validation of emotions. Not fixing, not sympathy, just validation and leading with compassion. Maybe where we get stuck in that higher order thinking and forget that we still have that primal brain, that limbic system. Dr. Poor just did a lot of work with autism and how our facial expressions impact the way we socially engage. Autistic children are at a disadvantage because of that, but can it be trained? Again, we've lost this. And good news I want to share with all of you, Dr. Poor just says, crow's feet, do not do anything about it. It's telling you that you have a very highly adaptable social engagement system, and even things, I hate to break it to you, like Botox, are actually impacting relationships because people are misreading cues. <laughs> and not only that, <laughs> I canceled all my appointments. Not only that, <laughs> they're misreading the person interacting with the person with the smooth upper face on the receiving end of those cues also starts to interact differently. <laughs> right, getting us to think again that the body has to express when something traumatic happens. But I wanna move right to the slide here, which probably is the most, my most important slide. And that is that I truly believe that any of this that we're speaking about requires a real shift from thinking that this is something to be learned and imparted to others, which 
works well in other categories, perhaps, academics and cognition, as much as it is to embody this ourselves and learn it from the inside out. It's a sharing and a way of being more than a list to add to your curriculum. And that's tricky because there still has to be a doing. I'd like to run a practice with you at the moment. We'll go right into it. And if you'd like, you can allow your eyes to close or you can leave them open, whatever is comfortable. So I'd like you to just tune into how your body feels at the moment, internally, without judgment. You can notice how you feel on the level of tension or stress. You can notice how you feel on the level of activity of mind or any feelings that are coming up. Just take notice. Don't try to fix it or change it. Just being aware, non-judgmental. Spend a moment thinking about all of the things on your list, how much time pressure there is, and what this week ahead and the next will bring. And exhaling to six. If you're worried about the count, don't be. Just allow it to flow and don't get caught up in how fast or slow the count needs to be. You can adjust how quickly or slowly you count to accommodate this practice. Stay with it. In Relating to school violence, might it be the case that somewhere out there, there might be a, a kid who's disconnected, who's not addressing social needs because of trauma, because of difficulties in the home, and with a little bit of connection or validation or practice or mirroring, might we actually be able to have an impact on, on future violence? Maybe I'm an optimist or an idealist, but I, I wonder, I think about that, and I leave that question with you.